In this video, I'll show you how I used hand tools to create rabbit joints that join the four corners of this box. I used a hand saw, a chisel, and some other tools to get the results that I wanted in putting this box together. I hope you enjoy the process so that you can try it in your shop. I first cut the pieces to length using the bench hook as a guide for my saw. And then I used a shooting plane to square up the ends of the work pieces. This makes laying out the joinery much easier and more accurate. Whenever I'm building a project, I first like to lay out my pieces in the order that they're going to be assembled into the project and label them appropriately so that I know the orientation of each piece and how it connects to the adjoining piece. I'm using rabbit joints to connect the corners of this box, so I set my marking gauge to equal the thickness of the work pieces. Now when I build a project like this, I like to have the joint project a little bit from the adjoining piece, so I'll set the marking gauge a little bit longer using the micro adjust feature on this gauge. For a conventional gauge, you simply can tap it on the workbench to make that adjustment. At that setting, I'm going to mark the width of the rabbit on the faces and on the edges of the workpiece. After marking all the workpieces, reset the marking gauge to equal the depth of the rabbit and mark that along the ends and edges of the workpiece. If you find it difficult to see the scribed lines, you can trace over them with a pencil. Take this opportunity also to mark the waist areas of the joint. That way you'll know which side of the scribed line to cut with a saw and a chisel. With the widest chisel you have, register the edge of the chisel in the scribed line with the bevel facing the waist. And then you're going to tap the chisel just to cut the fibers at the scribe line. You can actually feel the edge of the chisel snap into the scribe line to locate it. All it takes is a couple light taps across the scribe line before we move on to the next step. With the bevel of the chisel facing down, place it about an eighth of an inch or so behind the scribe line in the waist area of the joint and make a couple of taps to form a chip. What you're doing is forming a V-shaped notch that will be able to register the saw blade when it comes time to remove the waste and cut the joint. Repeat this process for all four of the rabbit joints around the box. Using your favorite fine tooth crosscut saw, register the edge of that saw into the V-notch that you created with the chisel and saw down to the baseline that defines the depth of the rabbit. Make sure to monitor your progress on both the front and back edges of the workpiece so that you don't go past the baseline. With the piece clamped vertically, use a rip saw and cut just to the inside or the waist side of your scribed line being careful not to go past the baseline. This will define the bottom or the cheek of the rabbit. This cut is a little tricky because you have to follow the scribed line and stay on the waist side of that line and monitor your progress so that you don't go past the baseline of the rabbit. After you've removed the bulk of the waste with the saw cuts, you can use a sharp chisel to pare the cheek of the rabbit flat and smooth. You're going to use the scribed line as a reference and make that face smooth all the way down to the scribed line. Another option for completing this task is to use a shoulder plane. I find a shoulder plane is a little bit easier to control 
and makes for a smoother cut. You can also use the shoulder plane to clean up the shoulder of the rabbit as we'll see a little bit later. Once you've got the cheek and the shoulder of the rabbit flat and smooth and down to the scribed line, you can assemble the pieces and check the fit of the joints. Use a square to help align the work pieces and then use a pencil to mark any high spots in the joint that may need addressed to get a tight gap free joint. Check the fit of each and every joint around the box before moving on to the next step. Use a shoulder plane or a sharp chisel to address the high spots and work the joint and keep test fitting it until you get a, a tight joint. A small square serves as a visual reference to keep the shoulder plane square to the surface of the workpiece. Once you're happy with the fit of the joints, you can move on to assembling the box. When it comes time to apply the clamps, make sure you check each corner with a square before tightening down the clamps. 